All right, so this is going to be objective 16. We are going to factor what I call easy trinomials, okay? We're going to do two types of trinomials here. Um, today we're going to talk about easy trinomials, um, and then the next lesson we're going to talk about, we're just going to bump it up a little bit, and I'm going to add in like another number into it, which makes it a little more complicated, okay? A little more complicated, but we're going to get really good at the basic trinomial for right now. And then once we get good at that, then we'll bump it up a level, okay? In the end, you treat all trinomials the same way, whether they're easy or whether they're advanced. Does that make sense? So how do you know today that we're looking at an easy trinomial? Here's the key thing. First of all, it's going to be in this form. And we've recognized this form before, right? Normally in a trinomial, you start with a degree of 2, and then you go to a degree of 1, and then you go to a degree of zero. But how do you know it's going to be one of the easier problems? Because of this right here. A is equal to 1. So that you know that this number right here in front of the x squared for today is going to be equal to 1. Okay? Does that make sense? How do you know on the next lesson that it's going to be an advanced trinomial when you're looking at it? Because A is going to be something Greater than 1. Very good. And so that's what it will say. It will say A is greater than 1. Okay? It's going to be a different number. It might be a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or a 5 or a 6. But for today, all the numbers in front of the x squared are going to be equal to 1. Okay? And this is going to be like a puzzle. So what we're going to do first, and this should be a review. If I said to, sorry about that. If I said to simplify this. How many of you would know what to do with that if I said simplify this? You should recognize that you just tested on it. You do the FOIL thing, yes! Okay, you do the FOIL. This is a multiplication problem. I'm asking you to multiply x plus 3 times the quantity of x plus 4. So we would FOIL it. So just this is just a review because x times x is x squared. And x times 4 is 4x, then what? 3 times x is 3x, and then 3 times 4 is 12. And then am I finished? No, because I'm going to add the middle up, and I will have 7x in the middle. And so now I'm finished. Okay, That's what we did in the last unit. Okay, We distributed or we foiled. Well, today, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to give you the trinomial. If I understand that, I'm going to give you the answer. And I'm going to ask you to work backwards. What factors make up or multiply together to give you x squared plus 7x plus 12? So here's what I want you to understand. Anybody enjoy working on, like, dirt bikes or cars or anything like that? Anybody enjoy putting things together? Well, let's let's just say if I did enjoy working on cars. And let's just say Miss Corns' car broke down. Knock on wood. Okay. Do I want to take it to somewhere that they don't really know what they're doing and they don't know how the pieces and parts work together, but they know the shortcut to get it to put together so it'll halfway run? Or do I want to take it to somebody that knows all the ins and outs of all the pieces and parts and knows exactly what they're doing to put it together? Which one do I want to take it to be fixed? The second one, right? So here's what I'm going to tell you. If you want to be good at factoring trinomials, you need to understand the pieces and parts of FOIL. For example, let's go back to this multiplication problem, okay? When I multiplied the first and the first together, which part of the trinomial did it give me? It gave me the first part. Do you understand that? When I multiply the last and the last together, the three and the four, which part did it give me? The last part. Do you understand? First times first gave me the first part. And the last times the last gave me the last part. So how did I come up with the 7x in the middle? How did I get that? I took the outside, what I call the outer, and then the inside. And so all together we call this the 
oi, and what do you do with the oi? We did what to do it? We added it. So I need you to understand that the 3 and the 4 in the problem, in the answer, multiplied to be the last, but what did we do with the 3 and the 4 to get the middle? We add it. So repeat after me. Multiply to be the last. Add to be the middle. Come on. Wake up. It's algebra time again. Y'all have missed me. Multiply to be the last. Add to be the middle. Multiply to be the last. Add to be the middle. Logan's awake with me today. Thank you, Logan. Multiply to be the last. Add to be the middle. Okay, Logan's going to know what he's doing today because he's repeating with me because people forget what to do with each part here, okay? So what I want you to understand, first of all, is trinomials are going to break down into two binomials, okay? So I'm going to make my two binomials. And when I'm putting it together, you know, if I lay out um, a puzzle or if I lay out um, the pieces to the car, do they, do they take all the pieces all at once and throw it together and bam, it's done? Or they do they section it out? Let's put this together with this first. You with me? And they section it out. When you're doing just a jigsaw puzzle, anybody a jigsaw puzzle fan with me? They're my favorite. Oh, yes. Okay, so if we're doing a puzzle, whether you like it or whether you don't like it, do you put the whole thing together all at once or do you section it out? How do you section it out? You do the... Outside first, right? Everybody does the edges first, and then we go back, and then we work the middle, okay? So that's kind of what we're going to do here. We're going to do the outsides first, and then we're going to come back and do the middle, okay? So here we go, piece by piece. We know that first times first is going to give us which part of the trinomial? The first part. First times first gives us the first part. It should make sense. So what times what is x squared? x times x. We know that last times last is going to give me which part of the trinomial? The last part. Last times last gives us the last part. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of lay out our pieces so that you know that there are other possibilities. We know the answer is 3 and 4, excuse me, but there are other things that multiply to be 12, right? So what we do is we make a little MA chart just to help us lay out our pieces and show us the possibilities. And we're going to, anybody understand why I'm using an M and an A? I'm going to multiply to be which number? Multiply to be the last, add to be the middle. Here we go. This is why I have you repeat with me. Multiply to be the last, add to be the middle. Multiply to be the last, add to be the middle. So what number are we going to multiply to be? 12. What number are we going to add to be? The middle term, what's in the middle, is a 7. Okay, so think about this. What possibilities multiply to be 12? You could use 12 and 1. You could use 2 and 6. Or you could use... 3 and 4. But when I add 12 and 1, I get 13. Is that what I want? No. When I add 2 and 6, I get 8. Is that what I want in the middle? No. But when I add 3 and 4, I get a 7. Ding, 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 ding. Winner, winner. You with me? I want to use the numbers 3 and 4 because 3 times 4 does give me my 12. So I'm going to put in a plus 3 and a plus 4. And when you add 3 and 4, you're going to get 7. So here's your answer. You're looking for numbers that multiply to be your last term, but when you add them, they give you your middle term. Okay, it's like a puzzle. you got to figure out which numbers you can choose that multiply to be your last term, but will add at the same time to be your middle term. So there's your answer. What's one of the factors? It's a binomial times a binomial, so one of the factors is x plus 3. What's the other factor? x plus 4. These are the two binomials that are being multiplied. Remember when I say, give me two factors of 6, y'all told me? 3 and 2, right? Because when you multiply them, 
They are factors. When you multiply them, you get 6. So when I say what two factors multiply to be that, x plus 3 is being multiplied with x plus 4 to give us the top trinomial. Okay? So here's your answer. Okay, those are your two factors. How can I check to see if I'm right? Remember, factoring is the reverse of multiplication. So instead of me saying, here's your answer and here are the factors, you can just take the factors and multiply them and it should give you back the answer. So if I took this and multiplied it, which I did a minute here, and I'm not going to do it right now, but I did it over here. When you multiply your two factors, so we're just working in reverse. Okay, just working in reverse. So, let's look at another one. My question to you is this. Is there a GCF on this problem? Because we, we learned a way to factor already. And everybody says, Miss Corns, how do I know to use this method and not the GCF method? How do I know not to use GCF on this? Do you think there was any trinomials on your homework? I don't know. Let's look. Were there any trinomials on this homework from the other day? Yes, there were three terms. So it's possible that there might have a GCF and it be a trinomial. So it might be that you factor it by GCF. It might be that you factor it the way we're doing today. How do you know which way to do it? Is there a common term? Is there a number that goes into all three of those? No. Do all three have x's? No. This has two, this has one, that don't have any. Okay, so this doesn't have a GCF. If it had a GCF, then we could do by GCF. You with me? We could factor by GCF, but it doesn't have a GCF. So everybody throws a pencil up and they say, I can't do it. There's no GCF, Miss Corns. That's not true because we now know another way. Okay, so Here's why we're going to try to factor this with our binomials. Okay, so we know that a trinomial, if it's not going to factor with a GCF, we know that we're going to try to factor it using the reverse of FOIL, which will make two binomials. Okay, so let's make our MA chart. What am I going to multiply to be? 20. What am I going to add to be? None. Okay, so let's just throw out some pieces and parts. What do we think, what are some choices that multiply to be 20? We got 20 and 1, we got 2 and 10, or we got 5 and 4. Why are you screaming 5 and 4 at me? You're not really screaming, but why are you saying 5 and 4? Why? Why is 5 and 4 the answer? Because they add up to be 9. Oh, very good. So that's the one you're going to want. Okay, so here we go. Where do I put everything? We know that first times first gives us which part? The x squared. So what do I need to put in those two first slots? x times x is x squared. Okay. And then we know that we're going to want to use 5 and 4, so we're going to put in a positive 5, and we're going to put in a positive 4. Okay, and there's your answer. It should be pretty simple. Okay. We're going to need um, after lunch, but thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so, what's one of the factors? X plus 5, what's the other factor? X plus 4. Would it be okay if I wrote it like this? Yes, why? Well, Yes, you are adding, but really this is what kind of problem? A multiplication problem. It's saying take this binomial and times it with this binomial. So it does not matter if you say x plus 5 times x plus 4 or if you say x plus 4 times x plus 5 because of the commutative property. Okay, so it doesn't matter where your 4 goes and where your 5 goes. As long as you have a positive 4 and a positive 5, commutative property says it doesn't matter which order you multiply it in. You'll get the same thing. Okay, so here's your answer. Today, on your homework, or actually I don't think you'll have homework, but tomorrow, everything we do for the next couple days, you need to have a check step. Everybody understand that? Okay? I promise to show a check step. And if I don't show a check step, I get a 50. 
because it's half the problem. Okay? Half the problem is getting it right, getting the answer, and half the problem is making sure you're right. You with me? So make sure everybody understand that from the get-go, I need to see a check step. And if there are no check steps, you only get half credit. You only get a 50. Okay? So x times x, x squared, x times 4. 4x, 5 times x, 5x, and 5 times 4, 20, and when I put them together, 9x in the middle. Does my check match up? Yes, and it does work. And everybody says, Ms. Coins, I really don't see why I have to check, because I know that 5 and 4 give me 20, and I know 5 and 4 give me 9. Anybody thinking that? Yeah. yeah. Well, I haven't thrown any negatives in there. You with me? And tomorrow or the next day, I'm going to throw some numbers in front. And so it, I always talk about that. It's like when you learn how to juggle, you learn how to juggle with like two things first. And then once you get really good at two things, what do they do? They throw in a third one. And when you get really good at three, then what do they do? They, you throw in more stuff. So I haven't thrown in all my tricks yet. So we're still on example two. We're still doing the baby ones. Okay, it's going to get more difficult. I need to see a check on every single one over the next couple of days. Okay, to make sure that you are correct. So why don't you try this one? This one still is pretty easy. They're still all positives. What are we going to multiply to be? 36. Multiply to be the last. What are we going to add to be? 13. Why do I keep putting signs with positive 36 and positive 13? For right now, everything's going to be positive, positive. But in a minute, we're going to throw some negatives in there with it, and it'll change it a little bit. So we got some possibilities. We got 36 and 1. We got 2 and 18. We got 3 and... 12, very good. We got 4 and 9, and we got 6 and 6. Okay, so which one is going to want work? 4 and 9. When you do add 4 and 9, you do get 13. So there's your winner. Okay, this gives you 37. No. This gives you 20. No. That's not your bill. This gives you 15. No. That gives you 12. No. You with me? That's the one you want when you add them up. So x times x and plus 4 and plus 9. There's your answer. Okay? It don't matter. Would it be okay? How many put the 9 here and the 4 there? So I got a couple that did that. Is that okay? Yeah, commutative property says it does not matter. x plus 4 times x plus 9 is the same thing as x plus 9 times x plus 4. Okay? 3 times 4, same thing, 4 times 3. Commutative property says does not matter. Okay? As long as it's a positive 4 and a positive nine. Any questions on that? And then if we add in a check step just to make sure, so x times x is x squared, x times nine is nine x, four times x is four x, four times nine is thirty-six. Am I finished? You need to make sure that your oi, your outer and your inner, make thirteen x in the middle. So that does work out. Okay. Again, what's the blue part? Because a lot of people say, Ms. Corns, I do all this work. What part's the answer? Okay. The blue part is the check step. That's you just multiplying it out to make sure that the two factors you put actually do work. The part that I'm going to highlight in black, here is your answer. Those are your two factors. Okay. All right. Everybody okay for right now? Yes. Okay. What's different about this one? It's got a subtraction. So should that affect our problem? Maybe just a little. Okay. What are we going to multiply to be? Twenty-four at multiply to be the last. What are we going to add to be? Negative eleven. So tell me. Hmm. What needs to happen to my signs? What, 
What are my options? What multiplies to be a positive? What multiplies to be a positive? Like signs. Either a positive and a positive or a... So tell me, which one of those am I going to want in order to get a negative when I add them? Does everybody understand? I'm going to want a negative and a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. But when you add a negative and a negative, you're going to get a negative. Okay? So, let's start throwing some options up there. I've got negative 24 and negative 1. Negative 2 and negative 12. What else? Negative 4, negative 6. And I heard negative 3, negative 8. So when I add these, and again, what, everybody says, why am I not using two positives? Well, you could, but when you add positives, you're only going to get a positive in the middle. So we need to get this negative in the middle. That's why I'm using two negatives. So a negative 24 and a negative 1 give me negative 25. Eh. Negative 2 and negative 12 give me negative 14. Eh. Negative 4 and negative 6, when I add them, I get negative. Eh. Getting closer, though. Okay, negative 3 and negative 8 gives me, ding, 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 winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, so now we just got to fill in our pieces and parts. First times first is x times x, last times last. I'm going to fill in negative 3 and a negative 8. And again, it does not matter where you fill in the 3 and the 8 as long as they are both negatives. Okay. So there's your answer. Is everybody okay with the check step for right now for time purposes? Okay. Does everybody understand how I want you to check on your homework? Yes. So I'm not going to check during our notes for right now, maybe on one in a minute or two. Um, but for you, as you're getting used to this, how many will admit when I first put up the two binomials in the beginning of the class, you had kind of forgotten what to do with them? So what will checking do for you? It'll help you remember how to multiply by FOIL. It'll help you, you know what I mean? It's, it's, number one, it's helping you check. Number two, it's helping you remember another skill so that you don't forget it. Because what did I tell you about multiplying binomials? I said you have got to know how to multiply binomials together. So this will help you remember how to do that. Okay. All right. How about you try this one on your own? Once you get it, raise your hand and I'll come check it. If you want to, yeah, that would be good. Our signs need to be, yeah. So, multiply now. We're going to multiply to be a positive 9. We're going to add to be a negative 10. But again, you can do, to get a positive, you need a positive positive or you need a negative negative. But we're going to want the negative negative in order to get that negative. If I chose, if I did positive positive, like you could do positive 3 and positive 3 or you could do negative 3 and negative 3. Or you could do positive 9 and positive 1, not 9, 1. Or you could do negative 9 and negative 1. And we know we're going to need the negatives. So if you added those, you would get positive 6. Well, no, that doesn't work. If you added those, you get negative 6. No, that doesn't work. If you add these, you get positive 10. No, that doesn't work. If you add these, you get negative 10. And that's what you want. Okay, you know you're going to need a negative times a negative to get a positive and you're going to need two negatives in order to add to be a negative. So there's where you want. So this will become t times t and then minus 9 and minus 1. And again, how many put the 1 here and the 9 there? Is it okay? As long as you have two negatives. Okay, and then you can check it from there. Any questions? All right, just a couple more. We've got a few minutes before lunch. What's different about this one? 
the last one is negative. So let's go ahead and set it up. Here's my other thought too. Is there a GCF? No. If there was, we would do it that way. But because there's no GCF, then we say, okay, there's no GCF and this is just a, what we call an easy trinomial. So I'm going to make my two binomials. First times first is y times y. Last times last gives me which part? Gives me the last part. So here we go. Let's make our choices. Negative 48 and positive 13. So I need to know what? A positive times a positive is still positive. Awesome. I love how she said that. You need a positive and a negative. A positive times a negative is a negative. But here's the thing. Will you, when you add a positive and a negative, what are you actually doing? You're actually subtracting, right? So we're actually looking for two numbers that will subtract to be 13. So I'm going to let you fiddle with this one because I have purpose for it. Okay? You fiddle with it. See what you can come up with. Okay. So, just so the recording can hear me, um, we just talked about how we know, based on our multiplication charts, right, we know that we got positive 48 and negative 1, or you could use negative 48 and positive 1, okay? You could switch them. Or you've got positive 2 and negative 24, or negative 2 and positive 24. You got lots of options here. You got negative 3 and positive 16 or you got positive 3 and negative 16. And I think we see one already that fits. And the purpose of this problem was, yes, we know 1 and 48. Yes, we know 2 and 24. Yes, we know 4 and 8. Yes, we know maybe 4 and 12. Not 4 and 8, excuse me. 6 and 8 and 4 and 12. But the 3 and the 16 it's not a normal one, okay? And we'll talk about this when we get back from lunch. All right, so we're picking back up on example six, and we were just talking about how just because you know certain factors because of your multiplication charts that you memorized years ago doesn't mean that there, are other, that there aren't other options. So always remember, and that seems to be the issue. People are like, I've tried everything. Nothing works. But then there's always that one that you're not used to. Kind of in this case, like the 3 and the 16, you're not used to knowing that 3 times 16 is 48, but 3 times 16 is 48, okay? So when you add these, positive 48, negative 1, you get 47, so that doesn't work. This gives you negative 47, that doesn't work. This would give you negative 22, that doesn't work. This gives you positive 22, that doesn't work. I'm going to go down here, positive 3 and negative 16 gives you negative 13, and if that, if you get the right number, like 13 works, but what do we need? We need a positive. So if you get the right number, just the wrong sign, what do you need to do? Just take your signs and switch them, and this one will give you a positive 13, and that's the one you want. So you can fill that in as a negative 3 and a positive 16. The other thing I'm going to tell you is this. You've, you've always heard the rules with positives and negatives. You always take the sign of the larger number. So if your sign in your middle is a positive, then which one do you want to be a positive? You want the bigger number, the 16, to be positive. So whatever sign you have in the middle, if you have two signs, positive and negative, whatever sign's in the middle, then you want your larger number to have that same sign. That might be helpful. Okay. Any questions? How many were able to get that? Yay. Okay. All right. So you try this one on your own. I'll get you started. We're going to multiply to be negative 24. We're going to add to be negative 2. So what will my signs need to be in order to get a negative? Both negatives? Negative times a negative is a positive. What gives us a negative here? We need one of each. So again, will you, everybody sitting here saying, there ain't nothing that multiplies to be 24 that will add to be 2, but you're not going to really be adding. You'll really be 
subtracting because you can have one of each. So, two. All right. So, what numbers will I want? Anybody? We got negative 24, positive 1. What else? Negative 6, positive 4. Check, check. And so when, and I do agree when we add those, and that's fine. It's good to list out all your options because, again, when you sit there and you go, and I don't know what works, you know, you have them in front of you. Sometimes if you keep all your puzzle pieces locked up in your brain, then they get all jumbled, okay? Do you have to use an MA chart? No. I always talk about, like, an MA chart, and I don't mean to talk babyish to you, but in my mind, this is what I see it as. It's like a set of training wheels, right? When you're first learning how to do something, a set of training wheels, something to help you get along the way is good. But once you get really good at factoring, what can we do with that MA chart? You can take it away. You don't need it. Does that make sense? But for now, how many like the MA chart? You like putting your puzzles. So, and again, some of my students like the MA chart. They like putting all the pieces down so that you can easily see what will work. And that does give you negative two. So two binomials. So the quantity of R minus six times the quantity of R plus four. And again, could you, let me ask you this. Could you do this? Why not? Because I changed the sign. This 6 is negative. This 6 is positive. So that wouldn't work, but could you do this? Yes, because this 6 is still negative here, and this 4 is still positive here. So again, commutative property. doesn't matter which one goes first. As long as your 6 is negative, as long as your 4 is positive. Okay, and then from there we would have the check step. Any questions on that? All right, so a few more examples left. What if, what do you see about this one? It says 2x squared. Remember I told you, you know today's lesson that it's going to be an quote-unquote easy trinomial because what's going to be in front? A 1. If you look back to example 7, what's in front here? A 1. What's in front here? A 1. What's in front here? A 1. Oh, you with me? We know something's up because I see a 2 in front now. Okay? So I don't know how to do the ones that have a number in front other than 1. Hmm. What can we do? What do we know? What do we know to factor? Well, but as far as ways of factoring, we know how to factor the trinomials that have 1's in front. Do we know any other way to factor, Tanner? You could, and that's what we're going to do tomorrow when you have a number in front. But as far as with what we know today, how many ways do we know to factor? We only know two ways to factor. What are they? We know the easy trinomials, and we know GCF. Hmm. You see a GCF? Does 2 go into all of those? All of those are even numbers. So I think you can take a GCF out. This is what we did like a week ago. Okay? So we're going to start with taking a GCF out to the side. And so again, this is just reviewing what we did last time we were together. Okay? And this will help those that weren't in here the last time we were together. Because 2 goes into this, and 2 goes into that, and 2 goes into that, we're going to take a 2 to the outside, okay? If I divide this first term by 2, what am I left with? x squared. If I divide the 12 by 2, I'm left with 6x. And if I divide the 54 by 2, I'm left with 27. My question is, am I finished? Tell me... What do you see left on the inside? Does that look like what we did today? The trinomial, does that have a 1 in front right here? Yeah. So I'm going to tell you this. This reminds me, I always call these like my babushka dolls. Okay, do you all know what babushka dolls are? You know what babushka dolls are. You just didn't know that they were called babushka dolls. 
those are those little wooden dolls. They're Russian dolls. You start out with one big one and it breaks in half and inside the big one is another, a smaller one, and then you take that one and break it in half and then you break it and then eventually you have, you know, does anybody have a set of those? An inexpensive set? If you have an inexpensive set and wouldn't mind bringing them for like the next week or so so I could actually show you I need to get myself a set of them, but I don't. But I normally have somebody that has a set. If, if they're really nice and expensive, don't bring them to school. But um, if they're not expensive and you wouldn't mind sharing them, so then we'll have actually a visual in class. But so here what we've done is we've taken the first doll and we've broken it into two. We, we have two factors here. What's one of the factors? This is what times what? A monomial times A trinomial, right? So what's one of them? Two. Two is one of them, the monomial. What's the other? X squared plus 6x minus 27. Now what are we going to do with the next doll? We're going to take it and split it into two. So we're going to take this guy right here, this is our next doll, the trinomial, and we're going to split it into two more factors. You follow what I'm saying? So we're going to take this guy and do what we did today, okay? So, what are we going to multiply to be? Negative 27, very good. What are we going to add to be? Positive 6. So, what will my signs need to be in order to get a negative? 1 positive, 1 negative, okay? Think about it. Am I got some numbers for me? I hear 9 and 3. We could either do positive 3 and negative 9. What will that give me if I add it? Okay, so close, just not the right sign. So that doesn't work. We need to do a negative 3 and a positive 9. What will that give me? Positive 6. Oh, yay, that one works. So we're going to take this guy and we're going to do x times x for x squared. Everybody understand what I'm doing? And then I'm going to fill in a negative 3 and the positive 9. Okay, how many factors total do I have now? <coughs> well, what do I do? I first took this guy, you with me? And I split him into how many pieces? Two. A monomial times a trinomial. Everybody understand that? So there's one and there's two. And then I took the trinomial and split it into two more pieces. So, but I would say that you can't count this and those. These two are that. Does that make sense? So in the end, how many fully factored factors do I have? I should have three. Like, and think about it with the dolls. That's why I need the dolls so you can see. You have the first doll, you split it into two. What do you do with the, the biggest one? Just kind of put it over the side. That biggest one in this case, I call this guy our GCF. And I kind of explain GCF. Anybody have a younger brother or sister um, that's really annoying and you love them but you don't and all at the same time? Anybody got one of those? You got an older brother like that? Well. I always say this is like your younger brother or sister. Can we make up a name for our younger brother or sister? Bob. Okay, so we got Bob. So what if, just imagine, and it's hard for me to imagine because I'm the baby in my family, but if I was the older one, and you've seen this before, you go into the store and the mom says, watch your younger brother or sister, watch Bob. And so you're like, oh, gosh, just go play for a minute. I'll get you in a minute. And so... For right now, you just kind of ignore them. But in the end, when your mom's ready to leave the store, or your dad or your grandma or whoever, what do you got to do? You got to go get Bob and say, come on. Okay? So for right now, when we were factoring the trinomial, we just put Bob to the side. So you could take Bob and put him to the side. But in the end, what do you got to do? You got to get Bob and put him on your answer. So in the end, here's your final answer, and there are three factors. One of them is two, the monomial. GCF is a factor. 
The other is x minus 3, and the other is x plus 9. Okay, and if you took your babushka dolls and you split it, you split it once, you got two dolls. If you took the other doll and split it again, you would have three in the end. Okay, three factors. So, let's talk about how to check this really quickly. Okay, can you multiply all three together at once? No? Everybody agree? You cannot multiply. So what do you do? You take two of them and multiply them together. I would start with the two binomials. Let's foil those together first. x times x is x squared. x times 9 is 9x. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. And negative 3 times 9 is negative 27. And when you add these together, you get x squared plus 6x minus 27. Okay? Then you got to bring this guy down. And how do you multiply him in? Just take it and distribute it. 2 times x squared is 2x squared. 2 times 6x is 12x. And 2 times negative 27 is negative 54. Does this match that? So, you know what I kind of imagine this? Have you ever, and I know I have like a thousand analogies that I'm throwing at you. I just have all these thoughts in my head, but I see this like cup stacking. Like, you know what I'm talking about, cup stacking? <laughs> Okay, so we started with one, like stack, and we broke it into two, and then we took that, and then we ended up with three. Okay, then what do you do? You take these two, put them back together, and look, when you put these two back together, don't you end up with this? Isn't this step right here, doesn't it match this step right here? You put them back together to make two. And then you take these and put them back together, and it matches your final step, okay? And so you just build it back up. So you put it down to three factors, and then you took two, put those back together, and then you took the third one and finally put it back together to make one. It's like building blocks, okay? Questions? Does everybody know which one the final answer is? The middle one. Yeah, the middle one. All this down here is just your check step. Okay, so this last one, does this have a GCF? And how do we know, for, for right now, how do we know it has a GCF? Because it has a number in front. Because again, all the easy trinomials have a 1 in front. But because it has a 3 in front, we know it must have a GCF. So what is the GCF? 3. So take a minute and take a 3 out of this. And everybody says, is that 168? But it's okay. Because once you divide it by 3, what will happen to it? It'll be smaller. So take a minute and take a 3 out. See if you can get to the first step. What do we get here when we divide this by 3? d squared. What do you get when you divide this by 3? 18d. And if I divide a 3 out here, divide, you get 56. Am I finished? No. So we're going to take this guy and factor it into what we did today. Make two binomials. What do I do with the 3? What do I do with Bob? For right now, we're just going to... Push them aside, but in the end, what needs to happen? He needs to come down on your answer. Okay, so for right now, I'm just going to like bring the three down. Just kind of leave them alone. I'm going to take what's in blue and factor it into two trinomials, or two binomials, excuse me.
Is this one a, how many of you, when you see 56, you think 8 and 7? Everybody agree? 8 and 7? Because that's the normal one, right? But don't forget, there's other things that divide by 56. Just because it's not on your chart from elementary school doesn't mean there aren't other numbers. We got 1 and 56, we got 2 and 28, we got, does 3 work? When you divide it by 3, you get a decimal, think. How about 4? 4 and 14. Ooh, I like that one because when I add 4 and 14, I get 18. Everybody agree? 4 and 14 is not a common one. Okay, they're not common factors, but they do work. So we have D and D and a plus 14 and a plus 14. Okay, how many factors do we have? Three. What's one of them? Three. What's another? D plus four. What's another? D plus 14. Here's what they will do on the SOL, just so you're aware of it. They'll say, which one is a factor of this? And here will be your options. What's the correct answer? C. But you know what people do? They sit there and they stumble through it because they look at this. They look at this and they look at this and they forget about who? They forget about Bob. Okay? You cannot forget about that GCF. He is a factor. Okay? He is a factor. So the answer would be C. Okay? Any questions on that? And just, again, how would you check this? If you had to do three at one time, take two. I would do your two binomials first. And again, when you take your two binomials, let me see if I can get it looking a little bit better. D times D is D squared. D times 14 is 14D. And then 40, 14, and 14 make 18D together. And then 4 times 14 is 56. So you should have, we went from 1 to 2 to 3, we put these back together, it should match this last step. You understand what I'm saying? Do you see what I, do you see it? And then when you distribute this guy back in, it should match the beginning back to 168. So again, you went from 3, you broke it down into 2. Does everybody see it? And then you took this one and broke it down into 2 more, so you had 3 you took these two, put them back together, it should match the second step. And then when you distribute in, it should match back to the top. Okay, does that make sense? Yes or no? Kind of. Does everybody understand? I kind of skipped the whole outer and inner, the 14. I did that in my head, 14D plus 4D and made 18D right there. I just kind of skipped that step. Okay. You're not saying anything, so I guess you're okay. Okay. All right. Here's what I would like for you to try. On page 489, I want you to try 1 through 4 and 12 through 15. 